And we're going to start uh, with someone who, like me, remembers just the, the sheer joy of the early World Wide Web before it became commonplace and accepted. But he also took that joy and he figured out what it took to build one of the Nets' great businesses. Please welcome Jerry Yang, uh, the founder and uh, Chief Yahoo, co-founder, Chief Yahoo. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Tim. Well, I have to say, Tim, you're um, one of the prep sessions. Uh, Tim reminded me that I'm probably one of the dinosaurs of the internet business, and I um, yeah, but it, can't you, believe I'm one of the old guys. You know, I know it's, uh, it's freaking really weird, isn't it? But, well, <laughs> Thank God you're still, still a little more senior than me. But, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I, I have to say, you're one of my heroes, and you've been, ever since, um, even when we started, uh, yeah. we looked to O'Reilly, and, um, and every time we get together, you, you're always on that next edge. And I, I'm fascinated, and obviously, thank you for you know, talk, having this conversation. But I, I, I just think it's so fabulous of you trying to change our government. But um, I have to say, I always feel like, every time I go into DC, I, I feel like I have to come back west, and it feels like whatever it is, away from D.C. gets done yeah. faster, better, and... Well, I, I think in general one of the things that uh, is true in our society is that competition really does right. uh, create innovation, and governments don't have much competition. And we have to figure out, uh, you know, how to route around them and how to actually create some of the services yep. uh, that, uh, you know, we, we used to think government had to provide. But I want to kind of... And they probably don't have much fun. No. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I'm sure But actually, I will say this. But People in government are incredibly passionate. By the way, I'm supposed to be interviewing you, Jerry. <laughs> Although we agreed beforehand we would just have a conversation, and Jerry kind of took me seriously on that. But uh, <laughs> I don't know what you're going to ask me, so I'm going to take the offense. Yeah, well, <laughs> take the offense here. Uh, I want to start, uh, because Jerry and I really started in the same place. You know, we, we were running, uh, uh, in some sense, competing services right. early on. I sold mine to AOL, and that was the end of that. And you went on to build a huge company. So you clearly uh, know something about taking a, a company from innovation to scale that I don't know. So how did you do that? I mean, what was the, you know, how did you go from that, this is just so cool stage, to, you know, building a multi-billion dollar company? What was the I, turning point? Well, I, I, I think um, that's probably the hardest thing. And, and, and certainly, I think, for any company that has any scale, it's still the hardest thing is to take great ideas and put them into the marketplace. But at least for Yahoo, and certainly in the early days, um, the formula was sort of simple. We're, we just try to get things out as quickly as possible and then try to iterate. Um, and that and, was the whole methodology about that, the whole lean startup right, movement. It's right. like trying and, uh, to systematize that. And, and I, I actually think, and one of the things I, I do now is I do see a lot of startups, and I do talk to a lot of entrepreneurs, um, and they have it so easy. Now uh -huh. you know it's so easy to have that lean and mean. Um, and we had so much to invent back then. It was like, well, what do you mean advertising on the internet? <laughs> exactly. But I also think Tim, one of the things that, um, and I use this as a sort of my measure of entrepreneurs and innovators, is you know David Philo and I started Yahoo. Larry and Sergey started Google. Um, there's a, couple, a lot of companies that started with a couple of people. Now if you look at startups, uh, especially in the Valley and especially doing you know leveraging all the infrastructure that's out there. What two people can do in a unit of time, six months, nine months, a year, it blows you away yeah. versus what we had to go through or probably what Larry and Sergey had to go through. So I, I just think the pace of enabling innovation, um, and, and obviously I, I, I totally agree with your notion of fun, but clearly having fun at the speed of what they can do now is yeah. it's a lot more fun than 15 years ago. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, in terms of, of the technology that you think is most transformative in terms of the speed of innovation. you have any thoughts of? Well, you know, you and I talk about this platform ecosystem open and close a lot, and, and, and I probably learn more from you than you realize, but I certainly think that um, the, what's happening with cloud and what's happening with infrastructure being completely you know, on demand is, um, is revolutionizing not only corporate businesses and governments and everything else. But what is really making the impact is, I think, this very small to medium-sized developers. And that's obviously creating a, a whole new set of um, tools. And what a lot of them are doing, to your point of 
you know, putting back into the system as much as yeah. you're taking out, or less than you're, you know, more than, more than t putting back more into the system than you're taking out. A lot of them are putting back tools and, and, um, and infrastructure back into the system and enable right. the next ones. Um, the, the, the pace of applications being written on cloud now, I think, is, um, is quickly growing, whether it's for the web or for the social web or for the mobile devices. Um, but it's incredible the speed and the level of creativity that's happening over a bit of a cloud infrastructure. So I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. probably not saying anything that's yeah. new here, but, um, but having witnessed it firsthand, it's truly amazing. So one of the things that uh, I've been obsessed with for years is the idea that on the web, uh, you get uh, data at scale is the next source of lock-in. And uh, you know, the, effectively, we're building an internet operating system where the subsystems are data. And uh, you know, Yahoo obviously has huge collections of all kinds of data. But you've also made some efforts to make sure that the tools for managing large amounts of data are open. You've done a lot with open APIs, but you've also, for example, been a big supporter of Hadoop right. for um, you know, processing uh, at scale in the cloud. Can you talk to us a little bit about how you think about that? Well, I, I think a lot of people say, well, how is cloud different from any previous versions of client server or you know, services or whatever? And I think the biggest difference is that in the cloud, there is a new business model being developed around um, leveraging the data and the analytics that's available and the compute power that's available in the cloud and using that as a way to drive new business models, whether that's driving targeting, driving intent, driving commerce, um, or driving advertising. Or driving relevance in mobile. I mean, when you pull right. out your mobile phone and uh, you know, it knows where you are and you're able to uh, do various local relevance, you forget, that's not happening on your phone. Right. <laughs> well, and I think that's, that's, it boils down to sort the of this notion the, yeah. of relevance. Yeah. And I think, yeah. you know, if you, if you look at Yahoo, we have to be as relevant as possible to our users. And if we can achieve that, you know, it doesn't matter. And, and, and same thing for all the, I, I think anybody out there today that's leveraging this cloud, if you're just using it for compute or storage, then you're not really leveraging the entire yeah. capability. And before the cloud was not, the client server was not very knowledgeable. You, you knew what you had on the client server and that was it. Now I think you have this complete uh, paradigm shift in, okay, how do you have analytic tools? How do you have things like Hadoop that you can um, push out computing and allow optimization to be done at a level that nobody before couldn't do. I mean, this is the stuff I, when I was at school and tried to learn how to do computer science, machine learning was this, this, this fantasy. And now it's, I think, a core part of business innovation. I think that's a really important point. Uh, you know, machine learning is right. the new HTML. <laughs> well, and, 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 uh, and, and we're not cranking out as many PhDs as we need in our school systems for yeah. this stuff. So you have this, you have this shortage in demand and supply, but um, so that, that's a good segue. Um, you know, you're on the board of Alibaba. Right. Uh, you spend a lot of time in China. Um, you know, we're always beating ourselves up about that we're not producing enough PhDs over here. Uh, what's your take on, on the innovation gap, the education gap, the sort of science and engineering gap? Well, I, I'm also on the board of um, Stanford University. And, um, and where I, what I see there is the best of the world still come to the United States to get educated. And, and there and we have- we send them home. Well, there we have an advantage. And, and I, we won't get into politics here, but to me, um, by and large, most of them want to stay here. What and do you think of the startup visa proposal? Well, I, I, think, I think it's, well, I don't know the exactly. Idea. But oh, the idea is Any that, idea of generating yeah. jobs, we should keep them here. If they're yeah. generating jobs- John Dorr said, give every, every uh, okay. PhD a green card. Well, but uh, the startup visa guys are literally saying, we need a visa that says if, if somebody comes here with a startup idea and is able to get it funded, you give them a visa. And, and, and uh, you know, it doesn't matter if they're Canadian or Paraguayan yeah, or yeah, whatever. Sure. To me, it's, um, it's really a fascinating thing. But to your point, I, I do think that there is, um, I, I'm an optimist for America. I'm, I'm, I'm an American. What I do is not possible without being in America. Um, but I also think that the, um, the systems are developing in different parts of the world, whether it's India or China or whatever, you and the China being an interesting example. Uh, but I would say that um, when America is firing all cylinders, and our, I think our collective challenge as a society in America is to fire all those on cylinders, but if we're firing on cylinders, to your analogy, we're really hard to catch. Because yeah. um, uh, this, this notion of innovation and entrepreneurialism, and I'll take Silicon Valley as sort of my little microcosm, 
it's infectious. Yeah. Um, the, the, the incubators, you know, I, I, Y Combinator is a popular one, but there's tons of these where now entrepreneurs and innovators are completely sharing best practices. Uh, and so, again, to the point of the two entrepreneurs who, who got a year under the belt, not only do they have infrastructures and advisors, but their ability to um, know mistakes that you know, people yeah. like me made over the years, it's, it's, it's incredible how fast that knowledge is accruing and building. And um, I would say a, a typical one-year entrepreneur who's never done it before, I mean, Dennis, maybe you could talk about this when you come up, but you know, it's clear that their knowledge now, whether they can actually have the guts and courage and everything else it takes to build a business, it's a separate thing. But yeah, people always see the winners learn. and they forget the losers. And right. It takes guts to do it because, you know, you have that opportunity of losing at any at any point. But to your point, I, I'm an yeah. optimist around the system that exists in the U.S. I do think, you know, um, this rapid innovation around data and the cloud. Uh, you're seeing, you know, China Chinese companies and Chinese government trying to build their own cloud. I, you know, it's a question of how open they're going to get it to in terms of consumption of that data. But, um, but they, they have tremendous amount of talent. They have people who are passionate. And, um, and they can certainly turn around things pretty quickly. So yeah. it's an interesting place to watch. Yeah. So changing uh, to another topic, uh, you know, Yahoo uh, grew up as a business around uh, free ad-supported content right. on the net. Now we've seen with uh, you know the iPhone, the iPad, uh, everybody's going, "Wow, we're going back to paid content! How cool!" You know, all the media people. Uh, what do you think about the? You know, have we really seen the end of free, or uh, it, is it just we're getting more arrows in the quiver? I, I certainly think it's that free is uh, not going away. I, I do think, and especially as you look at the value system around um, the content creation. Uh, you, you're always going to have sort of the top of the pyramid in the premium content, whether it's uh, the storytelling or the or the high high production value stuff. But the tail is becoming bigger rather than smaller. Uh, content is getting more fragmented. Um, and in fact, I think one of the notions of innovation, you know, it started with with you know 15, 20 years ago, where uh, people who had the knowledge of creating a computer site or a computing platform had the ability to create content or create interesting software. Now, that capability of creating interesting content, interesting software is down not only to the individual, but any individual with a device. And so, because so much of that context is in the cloud. Yeah. And so, I, I think um, all those people who are producing reasonably good content that might be interesting to somebody, either it's social around them or by location or however you define it, um, people are willing to give that away for free. Yeah. So, it's sort of job, people like Yahoo's job or others' job to kind of sort of create that relevance of that content. And um, it's uh, kind of interesting. There's a little bit of, of history between us uh, that relates to this paid content thing. Uh, we had the thesis as a publisher when we did GNN, the Global Network Navigator, which was this uh, uh, first web portal, that selection really mattered. And right. Yahoo listed everything. Right. And it's pretty clear that you guys won, apart from the fact that we sold to AOL. <laughs> uh, but you know, it, it really did matter that people wanted access to everything and not just the curated set. And the long tail really right. was the winning strategy. And more and more of that user-generated content. And, and I think the long tail is going to its next phase through social, um, through crowdsourcing, through all the, all the phenomena where the tools of creating the stuff and leveraging what's in the cloud is actually being passed to the last individual rather than to companies or to small companies that have the know-how. I mean, everybody who have a phone, who have these powerful computing devices can create content, yep. can generate content, can socialize around content. And so and not I, just I don't content, they create intelligence. I yes. think that's a really important point because we are all contributing metadata that's as right. well as content. And the services with the machine learning actually makes our services smarter if we're doing them right. And you know, we keep thinking that's got to be the end, right? But probably not. Probably something else will come along. But certainly, I think um, to the to the point of free or not free, I think you know, and certainly from my perspective, as long as the amount of free content is getting more, more pervasive, more local, more interesting, more real time, I think free will have a, a good you know sort of good path. I do think there is a a huge amount of content, um, and, and the next panel will talk about this, I'm sure, that does require a different business model, and I think that, that paid is a great, also a great way. I mean, if, right. if you're a developer and you can develop an app and get paid for it, um, yeah. I it's mean, great. Yeah, I mean, fact is that uh, uh, more business models, yeah, better. better. Yeah. Better.